This is a pretty big trend in games where you have the option of getting a pet, and Don't Starve isn't really exempt from that. Pets in this game are implemented to be purely cosmetic, since they don't really do anything. They follow you around, they cry when they don't get enough food, and they're kind of annoying, but that's about it. They're made with food items and an item of varying rarity. So Glom Glom will take Glomergoop and Taffy, for example. Giblet takes a Feather Hat and Trail Mix. The Ulet takes Guacamole and the Steel Wool, and the list goes on. And there's nothing wrong with these pets. They're strangely useful in very niche scenarios, such as the Lazy Deserter will show the pet before it shows the player loading in, which gives you a small amount of time to leave the deserter and still have the person load in. So, you know, that's something that's a feature, I guess. Uh, most notably, Wolfgang actually loses less sanity when he's with one because it counts as a follower. Funnily enough, Walter just can't get one because he already has Wobie. So, you know, you're not going to want another pet, right? Okay, so they're pets. Who cares? They're cosmetics. They don't provide anything majorly impactful in terms of gameplay. They're just there to be there. Like, what's the deal? They don't really do anything. Like, maybe you feed them glowberry moose and they're a small light source, whatever. However, there's one pet that does even an iota of an interaction that is actually impactful in game, and it's different from every other pet because of that effect. Therefore, making it better. The Lunar Moth is an adorable little creature and has the benefit of being lit up, as well as the aforementioned small benefits, and the light radius that it gives us can actually be used to avoid Charlie. So if you have a Lunar Moth that is essentially free light forever, with little to no cost on you. So why is this an issue? What's the deal? It isn't really a huge issue with the game, or it isn't anything game-breaking per se. However, I take an issue with this because it goes against the initial design philosophy of pets, that being nothing more than cosmetics that were introduced for the sake of being fun little goobers that just follow you around and cry when they don't get fed enough. But now, there isn't a reason to get any pet other than the Moon Moth, because the Lunar Moth just does something. In comparison to every other pet, the Lunar Moth is, by definition, the best one regardless of how impactful its perk actually is, just by the fact that it has a perk. That is more than any other pet could say, and I think that is incredibly lame. I think the way they implemented this is, it's just awful, because now there's no reason not to only have a Lunar Moth. Unless you are, like me, so against having this pet that is literally just better than every other one that I refuse to get it. Now, do I think this should be removed? Probably not. I think the Looter Moth is a fine addition and it kind of opens the door for other pets getting certain perks. Even if they're not just a light source, like for all I care, they could be a bunch of light sources. I That doesn't really impact me all too much. It'll make them all balance across the board and... Even if it doesn't fit thematically with every other pet, it's still something to even out the difference between every other pet's utility. But, I think that is very uninteresting in comparison to what they can do. Because the Lunar Moth makes sense in regards to it putting out a light source, because it is a source of light from the moon, whatever, I think you could also extrapolate that idea and apply it to other pets, such as Glom Glom providing a small sanity bonus. I think that would be a really interesting implementation for Glom Glom. Uh, you could also go down the list of all the pets, doing things like Giblets can just harvest berries or something for you. Uh, Cat Coons could harvest, like, grass for you. Uh, Ulets could spit out phlegm, which is, you know, whatever. And it'll, it could just be, like, small things, like, they do it every so often. Like, they don't do it consistently, but they do it sometimes, and they do it enough times to where it's like a oh, that's nice, type of deal. The same thing with a small light radius on the Lunar Moth, because you could use that to avoid getting hit by Charlie, and you'd be like, oh, well, that's neat. That's useful in this scenario. Honestly, I don't even think that them being widely unbalanced in comparison would be too big of a factor. Like, if you really wanted to, you could give the Broodling, which is a dragonfly pet, which requires probably the hardest recipe to craft him out of the, all of them, I think it would be fine if you just let people cook on the broodling itself, even if it was like, ideally it would be on a cooldown, because I still am under the presumption that pets are meant to be a small thing that you don't really think about, and you don't really go out of your way to get, but are just things that are 
more or less nice to have. You know, the list really goes on. I think there is a lot of things that can happen with pets and a lot of things that need to happen with pets just because of the existence of the Lunar Moth. Overall, it would just be nice if pets could do something to compete with its existence because it sucks that the Lunar Moth is strictly better. Yeah, this one this one is kind of lighthearted. Uh, it's not really something that I think needs changing immediately, but it's just something that I think is annoying. I think there is wasted potential in this design choice and I think Clay could do a better job. That's all I want to talk about, so until next time, buh bye bye